Next, we'll talk about phytoplankton. Photosynthetic organisms in the plankton are called phytoplankton. They're sometimes also called microalgae because they are so small and they are a form of algae. While most are far too small to be seen without a microscope, they can grow together in very large groups. In fact, the dark green color of many ponds is due to the presence of very large numbers of tiny algae. Phytoplankton contain chlorophyll and require sunlight to live and grow. Many phytoplankton species are buoyant and remain near the water's surface during the day where sunlight penetrates the water. Phytoplankton also require nutrients such as nitrates, phosphates, and sulfur, which they convert into proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. There are many kinds of phytoplankton. One group called dinoflagellates use a whip-like tail called a flagella to move about in the water. Their bodies are covered with a shell. Another group called diatoms are a type of algae encased within a cell of interlocking parts made of silica, and they can form colonies. Phytoplankton may be eaten by small fish, but it's the zooplankton that eat most of the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton play an even bigger role in aquatic systems than just food for aquatic animals. Phytoplankton photosynthesize when exposed to sunlight, so they're important primary producers in the aquatic food chain. They produce organic compounds from carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. They also produce oxygen that can remain either dissolved in the water or can rise into the atmosphere. To do this, the phytoplankton must obtain energy through the process of photosynthesis by living in the well-lit surface layer of the water. This is termed the ophotic zone, where eu means true and photic means light, euphotic zone. This takes place in the Earth's oceans, lakes, and in other bodies of water. Phytoplankton account for about half of all photosynthesis that occurs on Earth.